Why Won't God Heal Amputees? A presentation of God Questions Ministries. Huh. <coughs> Why wouldn't you cover that up? A warrior has nothing to be ashamed of. How about you do? I mean, look at you. You're just straight shirt cocking it? Toddler style? Oh, yeah. Full Winnie the Pooh. What the hell's happening? Why, hello, my fellow apes. I hope you are well. Today, we're going to visit Got Questions, a ministry that, in their own words, seeks to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ by providing biblical, applicable, and timely answers to spiritually related questions through an internet presence. And more precisely, we're going to review the seven ways in which Got Questions ain't got answers, as they fundamentally fail to even take seriously the question of why God won't heal amputees. If, as theists, and especially Christians, tend to insist, God is willing to cure the odd illness, say, cancer, why is it that he only heals ailments that also happen to heal naturally? If he's in the business of performing miracles, why not rejuvenate the odd limb? Why so discriminatory? Well, let's hear God Answers take, shall we? Before we get to the question of why won't God heal amputees, here's another question for you. Why won't God disguise your online activity? Well, if you've read the Bible or Quran, it's obvious. It's so he, an apparently all-loving, just, and merciful God, can send you to the eternal flames of hell based on your online activity, or indeed any activity. What a guy. Like most of us, I have several subscriptions to such services as Netflix, Amazon Prime, Spotify, and Surfshark VPN. But the one that I get the most use from, by far, is the least expensive. That being, you guessed it, Surfshark. Surfshark offers a wide range of protective benefits, including protection of your online privacy, an antivirus, and identity breach monitoring. But that's just the protective side. They also enable you to expand the movies and documentaries you can see on such platforms as Netflix, since if your IP is located in, say, the USA, Netflix will give you the USA selection of content. Surfshark VPN has kindly teamed up with me to offer my subscribers, you, an 82% discount with three months free. Couple this with their money-back guarantee, and it's a steal. So, if any of these perks interest you, and you'd like to help this channel grow, then please click the link in either the description or the comment section. Thank you again to Surfshark for the support, really appreciate it. And with that, we'll turn our attention to the question of, why won't God heal amputees? Why Won't God Heal Amputees? A presentation of God Questions Ministries. Some use this question in an attempt to disprove the existence of God. So, to focus on the question at hand, I'm not going to engage with much of the gish galloping from God Questions, but here I'll issue a retort of relevance. The word some is doing a lot of the heavy lifting for God Questions, because the vast majority of atheists, and indeed theists, that bring up the amputee objection don't claim it to somehow disprove the existence of God. No, they emphasise that if God is intervening in our lives to perform medical miracles, then the question arises of why does he not provide us with unambiguous miracles? The claim is about whether God is performing miracles, not whether God exists. In fact, there is a popular anti-Christian website dedicated to the why won't God heal amputees argument. If God is all-powerful, and if Jesus promised to do anything we ask, or so the reasoning goes, then why won't God ever heal amputees when we pray for them? Why does God heal victims of cancer and diabetes, for example, yet he never causes an amputated limb to be regenerated? The fact that an amputee stays an amputee is proof to some that God does not exist, that prayer is useless, that so-called healings are coincidence, and that religion is a myth. Yeah, you, uh, you see what I mean by gish galloping? Let's ignore it. God Questions references a source, but they embody the apologetic modus operandi of not actually quoting the source as to establish the objection. Rather, they simply tell us themselves what the objection, and indeed conclusion, is, and they do so from just one source, one non-academic source. So let's do what they won't and reference a source. In fact, we are reference the source that they present, even though it's far from the strongest presentation. The website immediately emphasises that the objection of why God won't heal amputees serves to highlight the issue of ambiguity. If God is willing to heal some of our conditions, why only heal conditions that also heal naturally? Why so mysterious? And to illustrate the ambiguity of alleged miracles, they present a case of cancer remission. If someone receives surgery and chemotherapy to treat their disease while also praying, and then fortunately recover, 
the actual cause of their recovery is ambiguous, right? It could have been the surgery and or chemotherapy, which have both been proven to have positive effects, or it could have been the praying, which has been proven to have neutral effects. The authors also note, of course, that this ambiguity is present even in cases without medical treatment, because on occasion cancer patients recover through their immune system alone. The question at hand, then, is what role, if any, did God play in the recovery? And more importantly, how can we be adequately sure of this? The ambiguity makes this near impossible to navigate, and so we need a way to remove the ambiguity. Well, one way we can remove the ambiguity is by focusing on amputees. If God is healing us, be it through his own will or through the answering of prayers, then we can at least expect the odd amputee to be healed for every, say, 10,000 cancer patients that have been healed. And yet we don't see this. In fact, we never see amputees recover. Why not? What's the reason? Why does God hate amputees? The line of reasoning employed in the why won't God heal amputees argument makes at least seven false assumptions. Assumption 1. God has never healed an amputee. Who is to say that in the history of the world, God has never caused a limb to regenerate? To say, I have no empirical evidence that limbs can regenerate, therefore, no amputee has ever been healed in the history of the world, is akin to saying, I have no empirical evidence that rabbits live in my yard, therefore, no rabbit has ever lived on this ground in the history of the world. It's a conclusion that simply cannot be drawn. Okay, so let's first work with Got Answers' misrepresentation of the amputee objection, and then their false analogy. The amputee objection doesn't conclude that no amputee has ever been healed in the history of the world from the fact that there's no empirical evidence that limbs can regenerate. That's just false. Rather, it concludes that either we should have examples of God healing amputees if God is in the business of healing us, which is precisely what many theists claim, or we need a sufficient reason for why God only heals conditions that we know can heal via natural means. Thus, Got Questions has already failed to grapple with the objection. And as for their rabbit analogy, it fails in its most important part of comparison, since unlike miracles, we actually have examples of rabbits. The existence of rabbits is not disputed. Thus, a more akin analogy would be to unicorns. There's many claims that unicorns exist, but all such claims happen to fall into the bracket of being ambiguous in their assessment. But if unicorns actually existed, we should expect to see, at least once in a blue moon, an instance that isn't ambiguous. Besides, we have the historical record of Jesus healing lepers, some of whom we may assume had lost digits or facial features. In each case, the lepers were restored whole, Mark 1, verses 40-42. Also, there is the case of the man with the shriveled hand, Matthew 12, verses 9-13, and the healing of Malchus's severed ear, Luke 22, verses 50 and 51, not to mention the fact that Jesus raised the dead, Matthew 11, verse 5, which would undeniably be even more difficult than healing an amputee. If Jesus once rejuvenated limbs and extremities, as Got Questions claims, and today the Almighty still heals conditions, as they also claim, then this only makes the amputee objection more pronounced. If God has regrown limbs in the past, then why has he stopped doing so today? Why is he only healing conditions that heal naturally, whereas in the past he was perfectly happy to heal conditions that don't heal naturally? What gives? Why won't God heal amputees? Thus, Got Questions answer here only serves to bolster the objection. Assumption 2. God's goodness and love require him to heal everyone. Illness, suffering, and pain are the result of our living in a cursed world. Yes, a cursed world that God deliberately created. Cursed because of our sin. Well, you mean our distant ancestors' sin. Of taking an apple, which God, in his omniscience, knew they'd take. God's goodness and love moved him to provide a savior to redeem us from the curse. 1 John 4 verses 9 and 10. But our ultimate redemption will not be realized until God has made a final end of sin in the world. Until that time, we are still subject to physical death. But the question isn't, why does God allow us to die, is it? The question is, why does God only heal conditions that also heal via other means? If God's love required him to heal every disease and infirmity, then no one would ever die, because love would maintain everyone in perfect health. Well, I trust that it's clear at this point that Got Questions is currently barking up a completely irrelevant tree. They're providing an explanation for why we die, not why God will sometimes prevent some of us from dying 
just so long as our condition can also be cured naturally. The biblical definition of love is a sacrificial seeking of what is best for the loved one. What is best for us is not always physical wholeness. Paul the apostle prayed to have his thorn in the flesh removed, but God said no because he wanted Paul to understand he didn't need to be physically whole to experience the sustaining grace of God. Through the experience, Paul grew in humility and in the understanding of God's mercy and power. Now, if God consistently refused to conduct medical miracles, then this answer would be of some value. But the fact that he apparently only lets up this rule or disposition when it comes to illnesses or conditions that can heal naturally is the issue. This is exactly what you would expect to see if God isn't healing people. Why, as we must perpetually ask, is God so discriminatory? The testimony of Johnny Erickson Tata provides a modern example of what God can do through physical tragedy. As a teenager, Johnny suffered a diving accident that left her a quadriplegic. In her book, Johnny, she relates how she visited faith healers many times and prayed desperately for the healing which never came. Finally, she accepted her condition as God's will, and she writes, The more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that God doesn't want everyone well. He uses our problems for His glory and our good. Got Questions appeal to Tada is off-base for several reasons, but the primary is that her disposition doesn't answer the question. God might want some of us not to be well, which is a huge side path that we have to bypass for now. But according to many theists, God sometimes wants us well, and thus conjures miracles. But why are all the alleged miracles ambiguous? Why does God sometimes want, say, the cancer patient to be well, but never the amputee? Contrary to Got Question's claim, the amputee objection does not assume that God's goodness and love requires him to heal everyone. God might have reasons to heal some people, but not others. The issue is that he only heals through the medium of mysterious ambiguity, he only heals those who have conditions that heal naturally. What a coincidence. Assumption 3. God still performs miracles today just as he did in the past. Nonsense. The frequency of miracles is not important to the objection. It's simply the fact that, as rare as it might be, we're told that God is still conducting medical miracles, and so we need a reason for why he only heals those that have conditions or illnesses that also heal naturally. In the thousands of years of history covered by the Bible, we find just four short periods in which miracles were widely performed. The period of the Exodus, the time of the prophets Elijah and Elisha, the ministry of Jesus, and the time of the apostles. While miracles occurred throughout the Bible, it was only during these four periods that miracles were common. The time of the apostles ended with the writing of Revelation and the death of John. That means that now, once again, miracles are rare. Putting aside the fact that Got Questions is insinuating that the majority of alleged medical miracles are not, in fact, miracles, this answer again is a non-answer. Frequency is not part of the amputee objection. This is a complete red herring. Any ministry which claims to be led by a new breed of apostle or claims to possess the ability to heal is deceiving people. Faith healers play upon emotion and use the power of suggestion to produce unverifiable healings. This is not to say that God does not heal people today, we believe he does, but not in the numbers or in the way that some people claim. Right, so Got Questions dismisses faith healers entirely for unknown reasons. They don't present a case. But they insist that God does definitely still heal people, but that he does so less frequently and in different ways to what many theists claim. But as has been stated a few times at this point, this answer does not even remotely deal with the objection. It in fact strawmans the objection as to dismiss it. So let's move on. Assumption 4. God is bound to say yes to any prayer offered in faith. Jesus said, I am going to the Father, and I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. John 14, verses 12-14. Some have tried to interpret this passage as a carte blanche from Jesus, promising his agreement to whatever we ask. But those who issue the amputee objection are not among them, are they? They don't claim that God must say yes to all prayers. This is a ludicrous straw man of the objection. No, we say that if God plays doctor every once in a while, as theists and especially Christians tend to claim, then it becomes inexplicable why God is so discriminatory over which conditions he heals. 
So with that, let's let's just move on to the fifth assumption that the amputee objection apparently makes, shall we? Assumption five: God's future healing at the resurrection cannot compensate for earthly suffering. The truth is, our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Romans eight verse eighteen. When a believer loses a limb, he has God's promise of future wholeness, and faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Hebrews eleven verse four. Jesus said, "It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire." Matthew eighteen verse eight. His words confirm the relative unimportance of our physical condition in this world as compared to our eternal state. To enter life maimed and then to be made whole is infinitely better than to enter hell whole to suffer for eternity. <laughs> What absolute drivel! Answering the question of why God doesn't heal amputees by saying that God will heal them when they're dead is a pathetic cop out. It doesn't even remotely attempt to grapple with the objection, and so unsurprisingly, it doesn't offer an explanation whatsoever. It doesn't explain why God only heals conditions that also heal naturally. What's more, notice that according to Got Questions, and indeed the vast majority of Christians, an all-loving God will only heal amputees if they believe in Jesus. That is, they only get their limbs back if they're convinced of frankly insane propositions. Now, as much as I tend to try and respect Christianity because I respect Christians, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. If you believe that an all-loving God judges us not on our moral virtue, but on whether we're convinced of such things as impregnating angels, resurrections, and people being turned to salt, you're a fool. Assumption six: God's plan is subject to man's approval. One of the contentions of the "Why won't God heal amputees?" argument. Is that God just isn't fair to amputees? No, it's that he's not consistent. It's almost as if Got Questions really doesn't want to understand the objection, isn't it? Yet Scripture is clear that God is perfectly just. Again, overseeing eternal torment on people whose only crime is using the bloody brain that God apparently gave them is anything but just. And in His sovereignty, answers to no one. Romans nine verses twenty and twenty-one. A believer has faith in God's goodness, even when circumstances make it difficult and reason seems to falter. So, do those who stand behind the amputee objection insist that God's plan is subject to man's approval? No. Anyone who understands the objection knows that this is not at all an assumption made. We're told that God conducts medical miracles, and the objection is the question of why God only heals those conditions that also happen to heal naturally. Why is he so damn discriminatory against amputees? Assumption seven: God does not exist. This is the underlying assumption on which the whole "Why won't God heal amputees?" argument is based. What? <laughs> What a ludicrous thing to say! It, if those who issue the amputee objection did assume that God doesn't exist, then they wouldn't be talking about amputees, would they? They'd simply say that they have a rebutting defeater against faith healing. They'd state that God doesn't heal any condition because God doesn't exist. But no, the objection doesn't assume that God doesn't exist. To the contrary, in fact, it assumes that God does exist. It assumes, as theists tend to claim, that God is healing conditions every once in a while. Those who champion the "Why won't God heal amputees?" argument start with the assumption that God does not exist, and then proceed to buttress their idea as best they can. For them, religion is a myth. Is a foregone conclusion presented as a logical deduction, but which is, in reality, foundational to the argument. What about the theists that issue this objection? Are they starting with the assumption that God doesn't exist as well? Really? What's more, the conclusion of religion is a myth simply cannot be arrived at from the amputee objection, since there's a ton of religious views that don't claim medical miracles. Honestly, this is shoddy work from Got Questions. And I'd like to tell you that it's not a representation of their standard quality, but it is. In one sense, the question of why God doesn't heal amputees is a gotcha question, comparable to "Can God make a rock too big for Him to lift?" and is designed not to seek for truth but to discredit faith. And now, if it wasn't already clear, Got Questions is assigning the various motives to those that disagree with them. Bravo! How very Christian of you.
But talking of the omnipotence paradox of whether God could create a stone so heavy that even he couldn't lift it, what's been the response to this question? That's right, theists have offered many proposed solutions, with many fundamentally redefining omnipotence. But before we can achieve, to put it nicely, such progress when it comes to the amputee objection, we need, at the very least, for theists to actually respond to the objection, rather than finding seven different ways of ignoring it. And if you're going to ignore it, like Got Questions has here, and you're going to attribute nefarious motives to those that issue the objection, then you can't exactly expect people to treat you with respect and charity. Which is why I haven't. You reap what you sow. In another sense, it can be a valid question with a biblical answer. That answer, in short, would be something like this. God can heal amputees, and he will heal every one of them who trusts Christ as Savior. Yep, just as missionaries hold homeless people's lunch ransom until they praise God, God holds amputees' limbs ransom until they convince themselves of insanity. Brilliant. What just incredibly just, merciful, beautiful God you've got right there. <laughs> the healing will come, not as the result of our demanding it now, but in God's own time, possibly in this life, but definitely in heaven. And by possibly in this life, what Got Questions means is if you've got an illness or condition that can heal naturally, then God might heal you in this life. But if you've got an illness or condition that can't heal naturally, then God will only heal you when you're dead. And why is God so discriminatory? Why does he despise amputees? Well, Got Questions ain't got answers. Anyhow, as always, thank you kindly for the view and an extra special thank you to my wonderful patrons and YouTube members. Your support is truly appreciated.